Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the March 4th regular meeting of council. I'd like to first recognize we are gathered on the traditional territory of the Sinemic First Nation. Our clerk tonight will be Ms. Sheila Gurry. Tonight's regular meeting of council will be held in accordance with the community charter and council procedure bylaw 2018 number 7272. The question period sign-up sheet is on the table by the double doors to my left for agenda items only. And if during the meeting anyone has a question regarding an agenda item, please write down your name and the agenda item on the sheet. And members have been granted uh, authority to attend electronically and Councillor Brown is attending tonight electronically. Welcome. First item on the agenda is the introduction of late items. Ms. Gurry, we have a couple, please. Yes, thank you, Your Worship, and good evening. Um, for late items this evening regarding um, count, um, item 15A, Councillor Manley's motion regarding Harewood Plains, we have the additional um, delegations from Bo Staff and, Bo Staff and Lindgren, Nature Nanaimo, and Hunter Jarrett Kiki Nursery, and that's it, Your Worship. Thank you very much. Motion for adoption of the agenda is amended. Move Councillor Hemmons, second to Councillor Eastmere. All those in favor, any opposed, none. Motion for adoption of the minutes is circulated. Moved Councillor Thorpe, seconded Councillor Armstrong. All those in favor, any opposed, none. Motion carries. Mayor's report, I have a few items tonight. I'll try and be uh, brief. Um, as if people were paying attention uh, earlier this week, and I certainly hope they were, or last week rather, uh, the city has approved the disposition of District Lot 9, uh, which is land surrounded by other lands behind Mount Benson. Uh, the transfer will uh, take place under the uh, British Columbia Land Transfer Agreement and under the terms Sinemic First Nation uh, will eventually receive the properties and the city will, has picked up $1,455,000 which we can use for other purchases for this city. It is a good news story both in terms of reconciliation but also in terms of uh, giving the city funding to purchase necessary lands and properties or other take under, under, undertake other tasks within the city boundaries. Um, for those of you who are paying attention, and I'm sure you all are, the water main flushing begins March the 10th, 2024. Mr. Sims and his department uh, will be out there as usual, uh, flushing uh, select water distribution mains. Clean drinking water is flushed at a high velocity through water mains to ensure that all piping is refreshed and any minor sediment is removed. If you, water users notice a change in water appearance, such as discoloration, they should clear their water lines by running cold water until it runs clear. Any discoloration in the water during the flushing program is temporary and it is not a health hazard. Um, also, uh, good news on the front for those who uh, love our recreation, the spring and summer activity guide is now uh, on, oh, available for viewing at www.nanamo.ca. Uh, registration for the programs opens at 6 a.m. on Wednesday, March the 6th. It's also available online uh, and by phoning 250-756-5200 and in person at Bowen Complex, Nanaimo Aquatic Center, Nanaimo Ice Center, Bevan Park Pool, and Oliver Woods. We have many new and exciting programs as Mr. Harding is smiling away, acknowledging this, uh, our plan for this spring and summer to support community health and wellness. Uh, that includes free roving playground program at 15 different park locations, specialty camps such as the Grand Camp, a summer camp style opportunity for grandparents and grandchildren, youth poetry camp, smash and splash, that's for those of the uninitiated, and I was, tennis in the morning and swimming in the afternoon, survival skills cha uh, challenge camp and more, explore the uh, park series, uh, expanded concerts in the park, 11 concerts in multiple park locations this summer, arena and aquatic camps such as Camp Paradise, Paradise and Merfoot Mer Camp along with skating and swimming programs, 101 pages of programs and services to meet a variety of all ages. And the good news is for uh, summer students, it will mean the hiring of approximately 50 summer students to staff the summer camp experiences. So. Please don't ever tell me that there's nothing to do in Nanaimo uh, during the summer. Um, and I, I want to mention a couple of things because it's going to be a topic later tonight, and that is about the Lotus Pinatus uh, here on Harewood Plains. The city has received a subdivision application and associated development permit application for this parcel. Staff have completed a preliminary review, are waiting further information from the applicant. There are a number of restrictions already respecting the property. 
uh, but, uh, including but not limited to environmental protection that will need to be considered as part of any development plan. The city plan includes this parcel within the urban containment boundary and designates it as a suburban neighborhood, keeping in mind that much of it is already protected. In addition, this property is subject to the following development permit areas. Environmentally sensitive areas, hazardous slopes, wildfire hazards, steep slope development, and the Nanaimo Parkway design itself, which restricts development along the parkway. Uh, as search, the proposal will be required to meet these established guidelines for all of the development permit areas. The requirements of these guidelines include the submission of a number of reports from qualified professionals, i.e. environmental assessment, geotechnical report, and wildfire interface assessment, amongst others, as well as adherence to any recommendations provided in those reports. As an example, we expect an environmental assessment, geotechnical report, and stormwater management plan would be required to address how to protect surface runoff patterns in order to make sure that the existing ecosystems within Lotus Panatus Park are maintained in order to support the sensitive plant species located there. Uh, the subdivision application we have received proposes 10 lots. Each lot must meet the minimum parcel area and lot dimensions required under existing zoning, R10, steep slope residential, for those of you who are listening. The R10 zone allows for densities up to 16 units per hectare and the residential building forms including single and multi-family dwellings. The proposal also includes voluntary parkland dedication throughout the property including environmentally sensitive areas. So just to be clear, that is where it is at the present time. Uh, and I think it's very useful for those, uh, the many members of the public who have written in, roughly 500 I'm informed now, who've received a response uh, a fairly standard response from me on behalf of council to please read the material so that uh, when this matter comes to for public debate, if you will, in a larger context, that everyone will be, be able to make an informed comment uh, and we can make an informed decision as council when it and if it gets to council. All right, uh, that concludes the mayor's report. In terms of rise and report, I am happy to announce that Council passed a motion to make an exception to the City's investment policy as it relates to letters of credit and accept a letter of credit from People's Trust for a development project located at 388 McCleary Street, which is presently a vacant property. And for those of you who have been here a long time, it was probably the site of the old hospital where you were born. We have no presentations, Ms. Gurry, uh, no committee minutes, no consent items, no delegations unrelated to agenda items, so we're on to reports. And the first is the Regional Growth Strategy Shaping Our Future 2040. And Mr. Holm, good evening. Welcome, please. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Good evening. And um, yeah, I, I'd uh, here uh, just to briefly introduce the uh, Regional Growth Strategy, um, uh, the request for acceptance uh, that was uh, provided to Council in, in January. Um, so the uh, the municipality, city of Nanaimo is a member in municipality of the uh, regional district of Nanaimo, obviously. The um, regional district of Nanaimo has a regional growth strategy in place and has developed a, a draft uh, new strategy to replace the 2011 regional growth strategy. The draft strategy was given uh, readings by the regional board. Uh, the bylaw was given readings by the regional board in December. And as a member municipality, uh, the uh, city of Nanaimo is uh, given an opportunity to accept the uh, the proposed uh, regional growth strategy bylaw, which sets out the uh, long-term plan for the region. Um, the uh, uh, the proposal um, uh, the, the bylaw as as drafted as proposed is included as an attachment uh, or a link to the report. Um, uh, the uh, as well um, uh, included uh, as as an attachment to the report is an engagement summary. Uh, significant engagement undertaken by the regional district over the last 24 months in preparation of the regional growth strategy. And um, I, we also have uh, Jamee uh, Shile uh, joining us. Uh, she's the um, senior planner overseeing the regional growth strategy bylaw development with the regional district. She's available to answer any questions. Um, but effectively, um, uh, what's being requested is, is, to, is for council to accept the regional growth strategy bylaw as, as presented. Um, I should also mention that the, uh, the, city's, uh, the, the city's official community plan, the city plan, includes a regional context statement uh, to confirm uh, its alignment with the regional growth strategy. 
uh, that's included in the um, uh, the council report as well. And uh, I'm happy to take questions. And as I mentioned, uh, Jamie Chalet is available as well. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Holm. Any questions uh, for Mr. Holm or Ms. Scheel? Not seeing any, would someone care to move the recommended motion? Move Councillor Hemmins, seconded Councillor Armstrong. Everyone's read the material. Any need for discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Any opposed? None. Motion carries. Thank you very much. Thank you for your attendance tonight via Zoom. Uh, the next is 12B, Development Permit Application Number DP1289-337 Robson Street. Mr. Holm again, please. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Uh, this is uh, a development permit application in the, uh, in the downtown um, primary urban center. It's actually within the Old City Quarter. Uh, what's proposed here is a five-story, 31 uh, micro-unit uh, development. And um, it's uh, Robson Street, so it's off uh, Franklin and uh, currently vacant uh, property. Um, what's proposed, again, is five stories, uh, five-story building form. You can see the property outlined in red uh, on, the, um, on the screen. And if you could bring it, please bring up the building renderings, attachment E, um, you'll get a, an idea of what uh, the, the concept for the, the building is, the, the proposed development permit. Uh, this is actually quite um, substantially consistent with the uh, previously approved development permit, previously approved by council in uh, 2019. Um, it expired in, uh, in uh, 2021. Um, so this is a, a effectively a renewal with some, um, some minor modifications. Um, this uh, proposal uh, provides for 100% uh, site coverage, which is allowed for in the uh, DT2, the Fitzwilliam zone, which is a downtown uh, development zone includes uh, underbuilding parking and uh, rooftop uh, terrace with uh, garden beds which you can see there um, in the middle of the screen uh, so the the um, the proposal includes um, a oh I should mention too that the as it was uh, substantially compliant with the previously approved development permit it was not uh, referred to the city's design advisory panel uh, for design review, but it is consistent with the applicable um, general development, development permit area design guidelines as well as the, um, the downtown uh, development uh, guidelines applicable to the downtown area. Um, a couple of variances proposed, a variance uh, to the height of the building from uh, 12 meters to 16.1 meters uh, for a portion of the building. That's, uh, the, um, you can see the, the portion of the building behind the uh, rooftop deck there, so a, a smaller portion of the building uh, requested for a height variance. Uh, this is supported uh, um, generally in, in the primary urban center. Taller buildings are supported within city plan. Uh, parking variance uh, from 12, uh, sorry, 14 required stalls to um, a 12 proposed um, is also requested. Um, I'm happy to take any questions, but it's uh, a good infill project in the, uh, in the downtown area in the old city quarter. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Armstrong, and then um, Councillor Perino. Thank you. I can't, I can't recall, but are the parking lots that are still there, and there's quite a few around the property, can the general public access those, or are they all private? Because I think one is it one that we're selling. Uh, through uh, um, your worship to Councillor Hemmons, or sorry, to Councillor Armstrong's question, uh, they are private. They're privately held, but, and uh, the neighboring lot is um, one that. Um, uh, actually, yeah, a couple down as uh, the city has sold uh, recently the, uh, the gravel parking lot there as well. But these are privately held parking lots. Thank you. Despite the variances for parking, this one I will vote in favor of. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor. Councillor Perino, please. Sorry? Thank you. Thank you, Your Worship. A question through you to Mr. Holmes. Uh, these are all micro units, so they're very small, about 365 square feet. Do we have a, um, do we have a, like, do you find that there's a real appetite for that? Is, is, is something that we should be building more of? Or, because 31 is a lot, it's a good area, it's great for walking downtown, that kind of thing. So I'm just wondering uh, what the popularity of it is. Um, yeah, thank you, uh, uh, through your worship, to Councilor Perino's question. Um, we, I guess, really, ultimately, the market will dictate. We're seeing, um, a number of uh, uh, one and two bedroom uh, developments as well um, in the area. I mean, Telus yes. Living is quite close by 
Yes. Um, those are more standard size units. We've also seen recently um, on Albert Street, uh, the conversion of uh, the old um, Macmillan, uh, I think it was Macmillan Bodell Forestry Building. It was previously a, um, a um, medical center for 20 Albert Street. Uh, that's being converted to uh, micro units. Okay. Um, so yeah, within the downtown uh, with access to transit and services. Yeah, it makes a big difference, yeah. It, it makes yeah. sense. Um, and uh, yeah, I, the, the developer believes there's, there's a market for that. Okay. Um, um, and uh, 31 units will be a, a good addition to, uh, to, to housing area. in the area. Definitely. Uh, just one other question, if I might. I'm just wondering, um, the, um, no, you know what, I'm going to leave it. I'll, 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 well, I'll, <laughs> so I'm hesitating. They, the, this came to the table back in 2019, is that correct? And it's come back again, so it didn't, so some changes were made. What, were the changes major at all? Were, I wondered what they were about that there was a change made. I, I was wondering if it was to the micro uh, units. That's why I was hesitant on the question. Um, yeah, uh, thank you through your worship. I'm not uh, not sure the internal okay. uh, layout previously what had been proposed was a, um, a modular form of construction. Our understanding um, it's been revised to uh, this. This is yeah. uh, proposed as wood frame construction. Um, so there might have uh, it's difficult to say, it's but different. Yeah. They, it may have been, um, you know, they did the cost analysis previously and, and um, determined that this was more cost effective That's or right. the market conditions have changed in that time too. Okay, and these are all rental units, aren't they? My understanding, yes. Yes, that's, right. that's good. We need it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Councillor Hemmons makes the appropriate motion. Councillor Armstrong, any discussion? Not Councillor Gesselbrock? Thanks. Uh, I just want to say it's incredibly encouraging seeing uh, this type of development happening in the downtown. And it's, you know, the TELUS building, there's a lot of buildings that are coming in that is going to substantially increase the housing availability. And um, yeah, I think we're starting to see the, the density come in to, to make a vibrant downtown. So thank you. Thank you very much. Ditto for me. All those in favor? Any opposed? Not seeing any. Motion carries. Thank you. Councillor Hemmons, sorry. I'm going to excuse myself for the next vote. Yes, uh, um, you need to, for the record. Thank you. I'm declaring a conflict for the next item. I live in the immediate, immediate neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you very much. The next is development permit application number DP1296-450 and 460 Irwin Street. Mr. Holm again, please. Uh, thank you again, Your Worship. Another uh, good infill development, uh, this one in the, the south end, uh, so near downtown, but in the uh, south end neighborhood. Um, this is uh, two existing lots. Uh, the, the concept is to develop two existing lots. Um, this is uh, Sun Porch Homes and uh, designed by Joyce Troost Architects. They, they're, uh, they've done quite a few, quite a number of uh, infill projects um, in the city, and this is another good example. Um, so two existing lots. Uh, proposed are 10 units uh, with um, the addition of live work uh, units in the, in the um, uh, lower floor of the building. Uh, three stories, the buildings would be three stories facing Irwin Street. And if you could please bring up attachment D, the building elevations, you'll get a sense of, uh, of how um, the buildings look from, uh, from the street and from the, the rear. Uh, so three stories facing Irwin Street and, um, and you can see they actually share, uh, although they're on two separate lots, they actually share um, common uh, access space and parking as well. So they're designed to, to uh, function uh, together. Um, and uh, another, another good example of uh, infill uh, in the city and in the South End neighborhood under existing zoning. Um, the uh, proposal has been referred to the design advisory panel with recommendations uh, provided that have been, um, been addressed by the applicant. Uh, the, um, uh, a couple of variances are requested, as you can see, a proposed height variance, a relatively minor height variance from uh, 10 meters to 10.9 meters uh, for a portion of the building. Uh, the percentage of small cars uh, requested variance from 40% small car to 50% uh, small car, uh, relatively minor um, front yard setback variance, um, as well as a, a, a requested variance for the combined height of a uh, fence and retaining wall from uh, permitted uh, 1.2 meters to three meters, so 1.8 meter variance for a portion of the wall. Um, uh, happy to take any questions on this one, but again, it's a good uh, example of uh, an infill development in, uh, under existing zoning in, um, in 
uh, a part of town that um, is seeing a fair amount of infill. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Holm. Not no questions, I don't see any. Moved Councillor Thorpe, seconded Councillor Perino. Any discussion? Not seeing any, all those in favor? Any opposed, none, motion carries. Perhaps Councillor Armstrong, if you can let Councillor Hemmons back in, please. The next is 13 bylaws, uh, zoning bylaw amendment bylaw 2023 number 4500 decimal 219. Councillor Armstrong. A uh, motion that zoning bylaw amendment bylaw 2023 number 4500 decimal 219 general text and mapping amendments to city of Nanaimo zoning bylaw 2011 number 4500 be adopted. Seconded Councillor Eastmere. All those in favor? Any opposed? None. Motion carries. Motion that electric vehicle recharging bylaw 2024 number 7365, a bylaw to collect electric vehicle supply equipment and energy cost charges for the city of Nanaimo be adopted. Seconded Council Perino, all those in favor? Any opposed? None. The next is fees and charges <coughs> amendment bylaw 2024 number 7336. Decimal 07, Councillor Armstrong. That fees and charges amendment bylaw 2024, number 7336, decimal 07, a bylaw to add electrical vehicle charging and connection fees be adopted. Seconded, Councillor Thorpe. All those in favor? Any opposed? None. Motion carries. And finally, bylaw notice enforcement amendment bylaw 2024, number 7159, decimal 19. A motion that bylaw notice enforcement amendment bylaw 2024 number 7159 decimal 19, a bylaw to assign fines associated with electric vehicle charging be adopted. Seconded, Councillor Perino. All those in favor? Any opposed? None. Motion carries. Item 14, we have no notices of motion. We uh, do have other business, and that's Councillor Manley uh, motion, re Harewood Plains. And we do have three delegations that we'll hear from first. And the first of the delegations is Paul Chapman and Amory Land Trust. Mr. Chapman, good evening. You're familiar with the drill. Five minutes at four minutes. I'll let you know you've got a minute left, please. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, hello, my name is Paul Chapman. I'm the executive director of the Nanaimo and Area Land Trust. I live on Franklin Street in the uh, territory of the Snunamuk people. And I'm here today to speak in, uh, in support of Councillor Manley's motion to protect Harewood Plains. This flower is the Hosakia panata, uh, formerly known as Lotus panatus, an endangered species under the Federal Species at Risk Act and the official floral emblem of the city of Nanaimo. Uh, the plant is commonly known as bog birdsfoot trefoil. And there are, there are many reasons to protect the, uh, the Harewood Plains. There are, you know, there's cultural reasons, ecological reasons, um, uh, the eco-asset service delivery reasons for the for the, its protection. And there are other rare and endangered plants uh, present on the plains, but I'm going to focus on the Hosakia panata. So here is the portion of the Harewood Plains that exists within the boundary of the city of Nanaimo. The orange outlines the 103 Lotus Panatus Way, and the green to the left is Lotus Panatus Park, and the sort of yellow area to the right is the uh, no build covenant area, no disturbance covenant area. Uh, and the park and the covenant area were realized uh, as part of a, uh, a development that happened on a piece of this property that was subdivided off that exists on the north, uh, north of the parkway. So these red areas show where Lotus panatus, Hosakia panata, is found in the Harewood Plains, um, in the, the, the largest population. So you can see in Lotus panatus park, there's two small areas. There's a couple bit larger areas in the um, covenant area, and then the majority of the plants uh, exist outside of the parks and outside of the covenants. Um, this is, represents 85 to 98% of the population in Canada. Um, 
This is the only place that's thriving. This is the only place that's viable. And you can see that the parks and the, or the park and the Covenant area really don't encompass the majority of it, and neither of them, the parks or the Covenant, encompass the critical habitat that is necessary to support these plants. Uh, and th these are exceedingly rare conditions that support these plants. So what is the critical habitat? First, uh, Hayward Plains is specifically mentioned in the Kosowick Assessment Report for Boggs Birdfoot Trefoil, and it reads, as they form an interconnected series of subpopulations that can interbreed and form the central core of the species range in British Columbia, the populations of Hosakia panata at Hayward Plains are especially significant and worthy of conservation. The official recovery strategy for this endangered species has identified the catchment areas as critical habitat for the survival and recovery of the species. So the catchment areas are that, that high point of land where water drains down to those plants, right? That's the catchment basin. And these blue areas um, roughly delineate where those catchments are in relation to the Hosakia panata present on 103 Lotus Panatus Way and into the RDN there adjacent to it. These are the vernal seeps and pools of the Harewood Plains. So how rare is Hosakia panata? Like I said, it's 85 to 98 percent of it exists on the Harewood Plains and the majority of that within the city of Nanaimo. Um, there are a few other, minute, Mr. Chairman. there are a few other popu uh, smaller populations around but nothing as, as big and as viable as in, in the city of Nanaimo. This is it. This is it in BC. This is it in Canada. This is unique to Nanaimo. There are no other Harewood Plains. This is it. The NALT Board of Directors has expressed its wholehearted support of Councillor Manley's motion in a letter sent to Mayor and Council. NALT looks forward to working with, city, with the city to protect this special place. Please feel free to contact me if you'd like more information about the rare and endangered species and ecosystems of Harewood Plains. And thank you for your time, and I'd be happy to hear any comments or any questions you may have. Thank you very much. Councillor Ishmir. Uh, thank you. At, through you, I, I wondered um, if you could speak to the name change of the Lotus Panatus, um, because it's you're, you're using the term Hoxakia now. Is uh, that something that we should be recognizing since it is Nanaimo's official flower? I, I think that it'll uh, lead to decades more confusion, whatever way we decide to go. Um, the parks are named Lotus Panatus, the streets named Lotus Panatus. People think of it as Lotus Panatus, but it is Hosakia Panata. You know, a rose by any other uh, name would be as rare. Okay, I'm just, just want to make sure that it's... A lotus is still a lotus banatus by any other name. <laughs> Sometimes uh, names get updated because of, like, uh, inaccurate backgrounds or um, the origin of the name. It was but, an inaccurate description of the plant. Okay. But you think it would be okay to con continue? I, I, there are bigger fights to fight than, okay. <laughs> than everyone's using the same name. And just in terms of... Um, the, the park itself and any signage in the park almost none exists to my knowledge and um, I am worried about the uh, entrance of, uh, of the park. There's no like delineation of where the park begins and off-road vehicles could easily access that space and do a lot of damage in a very short period of time. I just wondered, are you aware of anything that uh, delineates where the park begins and, and would you encourage the city to do do more to help uh, protect the park from entrance of off-road vehicles? I, I think Mr. Harding's better placed to answer this question than I am, but I believe that the uh, park staff are developing signage. And I think that, you know, that um, I, I was saying that uh, like a lock will keep an honest man out and signage gives people who would, um, you know, want to follow the rules the opportunity to do that. Yeah, thank you. And, and maybe I'll, I can, after your um, delegation, ask city staff about what the plans are for that. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Prino, and then Councillor Manley. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. A question through you to Mr. Chapman. I'm just wondering if uh, any scientific work is being done to help this flower to flourish further than what it's further than where it's where it, where it's located because it's so minimal. Um, yeah, I know that the. Uh, Ministry of uh, Environment and Climate Change Canada is conducting a critical threat assessment okay. um, for the critical habitat of the, the Hosaki Panada. Okay. So um, 
that work is being done. I don't know at what stage, and I, I'm not privy to that information, but I know that that's being done in relation to the subdivision application that's uh, in front of okay. uh, the approving officer. Thank you so much. And Councilor Manley. Your Worship, uh, through you. Um, so this is a very unique uh, situation in Canada. Does this plant exist in other spots, like in Washington State or other parts of North America? Yeah, it does um, exist as you move south along the you know the, the sort of Pacific Coastal Corridor. Uh, but this is the northernmost uh, point of of its existence, and the, that existence of those conditions, those vernal seeps and pools that that provide that critical habitat. So it's a very unique, uh, very unique very unique kind of ecosystem that that helps this plant survive. Are there other endangered uh, plant species in the Harewood Plains? Yeah, there's a carex, a type of grass, carex tumulcula, I think it's called, and um, a dense spike evening primrose. And then I, um, staff will be better able to tell you, but I believe there's some insect species as well. And then um, you've mentioned before that there's camas fields there that do you think may, may have been nurtured by Sinanemo over time? Um, yeah, I, I mean, I'm, I'm not going to presume to answer on, on behalf of Snanamo, but I don't, I don't think that you can come across fields full of camas and, and not believe that that's a managed field. So that um, Camas doesn't spread easily without intervention. So when you come across large swaths of camas, it, it, it invariably means that it has been managed over time as, as a food source. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Armstrong. Uh, thank you. For this area, are, are these plants extremely important for our bee population as well, do you know? Um, uh, Staffan's really the expert on that sort okay. of stuff, or at least I'm, he's more expert than I am. Uh, but I, you know, I, I think you know, the saying is, uh, if you tug at one thing on nature, you'll find that it's connected to everything. And so um, you know, what, what, what are the creatures that are so specialized that they rely on Hosakia panata, that they um, pollinate Hosakia panata, and then what relies on them, you know, it's, a, it's all those, those systems in the ecosystem. So without, without having the, uh, you know, the, yeah, the, the that knowledge around there, I'd say it, they're very important, yes. And, and just to follow up, if I may, and um, is there many migratory birds that are your way of that, that make nests or in that area as well? Um, I'm, yeah, there's, there's lots, lots and lots of birds fly through there. I, I've tried to find information on um, pileated woodpecker nesting sites, but you really have to conduct a survey for that, and, and because uh, the, the private property, we just don't have that permissions to do that sort of work. Yeah, thank you. I, I did talk to one of the biologists who did confirm that there was quite a few protected birds and nests in that area, so that's good. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Chapman. Appreciate the presentation. Uh, the next is Bo Staffan Lindgren. Mr. Lindgren, if you can introduce yourself for the record in five minutes, and I'll let you know when you have a minute left. Thank you. Okay. Um, thank you very much. Um, my name is Stefan Lindgren, and I'm speaking on behalf of Nature Nanaimo tonight. Um, in my former life, I worked at the University of Northern British Columbia, and I'm now a professor emeritus there, so my, my expertise is in entomology and forest entomology. I've lived in Nanaimo since my retirement in, at the end of 2015. I learned about Harewood Plains shortly after moving here, and I quickly realized how unique this area is. So I'm passionate about this, what I call a flowering jewel, right on our doorstep. And unfortunately, it's now under threat by vandalism, development, uh, the development that uh, Mayor Crow, uh, Crow um, detailed earlier on. And we also have to look at climate change depending on what, what uh, the effects of that will be as a, th as a potential threat. Nature Nanaimo, NALT, and several other organizations have been working to find ways to protect uh, Lotus Panatas Park and adjacent areas in perpetuity. Uh, I mean, I'm very encouraged by the city's thorough, thorough review of the development application 
The review recognizes the sensitivity of the area and details many requirements to provide significantly more information to ensure that ecological functionality remains intact should the development be approved. Having said that, I still have many concerns. Personally, I feel, fail to see how a development uphill from Lotus Bananas Park would not impact the park itself. There are unique and critical hydrological features that make possible the survival of rare plants like Hosakia pinata, uh, and as Paul said, formerly Lotus Bananas. As you may know, well, Paul just told you, <laughs> <clears throat> Harewood Plain support, supports the vast majority of this species Canadian population and the area also supports many other rare and threatened plant species. The protection of Harewood Plains is, in my opinion, of national and provincial interest as well as, as uh, regional and city interest and Councillor Manley's motion addresses this. In addition, the area is of cultural interest to First Nations. Um, according to Nancy Turner, who's an eminent ethnobotanist, and uh, so that's where Paul's, Paul's uh, description of these fields, camas, uh, comes from. So I would like you to consider also that if the proposed development goes ahead and the park is ecologically compromised in spite of attempts at mitigation, that'll be forever. This can't be reversed. If we lose it, it's gone. Therefore, Nature and I will strongly support Councillor Manley's motion as an important step in securing protection for Lotus Pinatas Park and hopefully the rest of Her Herwood Plains. Thank you. Thank you very much. Councillor Armstrong. Thank you. Just just a question for you. I know everybody's written to council, but can you please write your MLAs and MPs for us as well? I'm sorry? Can you please write your MLAs and MPs if you haven't as well? Because this is where we need the help from. Yeah, if you could I'm, please write your MLA and your MP as well, Councilor oh, Armstrong. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, that's where we need the help to do this, right? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, and the third delegation is Hunter Jarrett of Kiki Nursery. Mr. Jarrett, you've heard the drill. Get down here, introduce yourself. Five minutes, and I'll let you know in a minute. Thanks for coming. Perfect. Thank you. So yeah, my name is Hunter Jarrett. Uh, I'm 23 years old, and I'm a graduate of the Bachelor of Natural Resource Protection Program at Vancouver Island University. I'm a full-time restoration consultant with a focus on Gary Oak ecosystem, and I'm incredibly thankful for this opportunity to voice my support for Councillor Paul Manley's motion to protect the Harewood Plains. One of my interests is to seek out and find rare plants and habitats. Being able to see a rare species in bloom after careful research and planning is uniquely rewarding. Specifically, of course, I focus on species found in Gary Oak and associated ecosystems. Deltoid balsam root, yellow montane violet, fern leaf biscuit root, fragrant popcorn flower, bearded owl clover, golden paintbrush. These are all incredibly rare species associated with these ecosystems that I'm willing to bet most people here have never seen or heard of before. They are complex and beautiful many of them clinging to survival, restricted to only a handful of sites and individuals in all of Canada. This plant hunting has given me a unique insight into Gary Oak ecosystems, taking me up and down Vancouver Island and onto many of the Gulf Islands. I truly mean it when I say that the Harewood Plains is the beating heart of our Gary Oak ecosystems left in Canada. Nowhere else have I seen such prolific, abundant blooms of native wildflowers. The rare vernal pools and other ephemeral wet areas at Harewood Plains, which are often overlooked and not protected or even acknowledged by the Canadian Wetland Classification System, are home to species at risk of extinction. The Harewood Plains has been foundational in shaping my career path, propelling, me <clears throat> propelling my passion to protect, restore, and steward these sensitive places. 
One of the most notable species that would be impacted by any sort of development at Harewood Plains is Hosakia panata, as we mentioned before, the city of Nanaimo's floral emblem. Of the seven known existing populations, all are in the Nanaimo area, and the largest, as mentioned before, is at Harewood Plains. According to the last Cosebrook report, there are only 2,000 plants left in Canada, and 1,500 of them are at the Harewood Plains. As a breakdown, we have a highly endangered species with a small number of populations, unique habitat requirements, limited seed dispersal capabilities, and a lack of protection on private land. I chose to highlight this species specifically because the proposed development at 103 Lotus Panatus Way will directly impact the vernal pools and ephemeral wet areas, critical habitat which Hosakia panata needs to survive. I am gravely concerned that if developed, this would impact the hydrology of the surrounding area as well. As a youth, my peers and I fully understand that we need more housing to meet the current demand. However, we are also actively experiencing a biodiversity and climate crisis. And owning a house is something that is becoming more and more unrealistic for us. As a province, we are actively trying to reconcile with our indigenous nations. And so impacting a pristine endangered Gary Oak ecosystem, the most biodiverse terrestrial ecosystem in our province, which is drought tolerant and cultivated over the course of thousands of years by the Coast Salish peoples is not the way to address this housing crisis. It will only foster further issues, which will likely be more difficult and costly to address in the future. As someone who actively restores Gary Oak ecosystem in both workplace and volunteer capacities, it is not quick and easy. It takes an incredible amount of time, money, resources, and knowledge, much of the knowledge which we have lost, a combination of this is hard to come by. If we lose the Harewood Plains, I'm afraid that the ecological baseline for these ecosystems will continue to decline. The impacts will be felt for generations to come, and I feel that during the process, we may lose a piece of our collective identity that we may never be able to fully get back. One minute. I urge the decision makers here today to demonstrate strong leadership and position the city of Nanaimo on the right side of history. With such a unique endangered ecosystem, all of Canada is watching how we proceed here. I fully support Councillor Paul Manley's motion that the city of Nanaimo requests that the federal government work with the city of Nanaimo, the regional district of Nanaimo, the Nanaimo First Nation, the Nanaimo and Area Land Trust, and the province of BC to protect the ecologically and culturally sensitive areas within the area known as the Harewood Plains, including the protection of identified species of at risk of extinction. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any questions to the delegation? I'm Councillor Eastmere. Um, I just wondered, uh, you've done a lot of invasive species removal. Uh, have you noticed a lot of encroachment in Lotus Panatus Park? Like how, how much of a threat is the issue of in invasive species in addition to all of the uh, climate degradation that we're seeing? I'd say the Harewood Plains is uh, unique that you really don't see much broom there, but I do know that that is the result of countless volunteer hours. Um, NALT, for example, just hosted an event at Lotus Panatus Park to, to manage scotch broom there, for example. Yeah. And do you keep a running tally of the amount of volunteer hours that you personally put in as invasive <laughs> species guy? Because uh, I know that on top of your full-time work, you're out in many different areas of Nanaimo, and I was lucky to get to do a little bit of a tour with you, and I was right. so impressed to see your <laughs> giant piles of dead scotch broom that you've personally removed. Do you have a sense of how many hours you put in? Um, I haven't tallied it up recently, but um, since starting my university and then ending up until now, it's probably like the six to 700 hour range. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's, uh, it's really incredible the amount of work that you as a single individual have done and you're also inspiring a lot of other people to take on that challenge. So honestly, from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Gesselbrook. Thanks. Yeah, I just wanted to take a moment to say thanks for coming here tonight and speaking to us. I think, uh, you know, there's a lot of familiar faces that come for things like this, and um, I just think somebody on your generation that's so engaged in bringing folks in there, uh, yeah, it was nice to hear that, you know, I don't know if you walked there when you were younger, but it was inspired you to take the type of line of work that you did, but um, I think it's super crazy important work, so thanks for, yeah, taking leadership and speaking to us. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Manley, I'm going to suggest you read out both uh, motions and we can uh, deal with them together. I'll look for a seconder and then let you speak to it. 
Uh, thank you, Your Worship. So the, the two motions read that the City of Nanaimo rest, request that the Province of British Columbia work with the City of Nanaimo, the Regional District of Nanaimo, Nanaimo First Nation, Nanaimo Area Land Trust, and the Federal Government to protect the ecologically and culturally sensitive areas within the area known as the Harewood Plains, including the protection of identified species at risk, and that the City of Nanaimo request that the Federal Government work with the City of Nanaimo, the Regional District of Nanaimo, Nanaimo First Nation, Nanaimo and Area Land Trust, and the Province of British Columbia to protect the ecologically and culturally sensitive areas within the area known as Harewood Plains, including the protection of identified species at risk. And seconded, Councillor Perino. Go ahead, Councillor Manley, you'll speak to it. Yeah, so this part of the world, the southeast coast of Vancouver Island, is all privatized due to the e and land grant uh, of 1887 when, when BC Joint Confederation, uh, part of the deal was to build the e and Railway from Nanaimo to uh, Esquimalt, and as such, we lost 8,000 square kilometers of uh, land to Robert Dunsmuir along with $750,000 to build a railway. And as a result of that, less than 2% of the land base in the regional district of Nanaimo is protected. And as a city, we have some very unique areas. There's very unique areas in the regional district of Nanaimo. Most people aren't aware that there's cactus growing at Moorcroft uh, Regional Park. And this is a very uh, unique area as well. And it's incumbent upon us to protect what we can uh, in this region, especially endangered species and, uh, and sensitive ecological systems. But we can't do that as a city alone. We just do not have the tax base or the funding to do it. And I think it's, it's incumbent upon uh, the province of British Columbia and the federal government to step up and work with, with First Nations, and in this particular case with uh, Snanamo, to protect areas that are that are important to them. And I've talked to elders at Snanamo. I know that there are uh, petroglyphs in, in the Harewood Plains area. Um, I've talked to them about the Camas fields. And um, this is an important area t to them as well. And I think that uh, working in, in towards reconciliation to make sure that we uh, recognize the importance of these areas, uh, not just for the, 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 the uh, sensitive species and the species at risk and the ecosystems, but also the cultural uh, importance of these areas. And so that's why I'm bringing this motion forward. And uh, I'm hoping, I'm, I'm uh, happy to hear this presentation tonight. Thank, thank the presenters for the, the knowledge that they bring forward. And I'd like to thank everybody for sending all those 500 emails, although it really <laughs> clogged up my email box as, long, as well as everybody else's. But it just shows that this is, this is important to the citizens of Nanaimo. And um, I want our MLAs uh, and MP to understand that and um, work with their counterparts at the federal level and the provincial level to, to work on protecting this area. So thank you. Thank you very much. Councillor Eastmere, then Councillor Gesselbrook. Um, thank you. Yeah, I'm excited to support this motion. I uh, loved seeing the amount of engagement from the public, the number of emails coming in. I think that uh, it's, it's always good if, if you care about something to reach out to your elected officials because that's how we get a, a read on whether it's something that is, is really important to people. And so uh, that's a, an amazing example of how much passion there is for protecting this area. And it just helps us make the case to the provincial and federal government about, about how important this issue is. So thank you so much for that. Uh, I welcome those emails anytime. Uh, and I, I do have a question for staff as far as um, what the city is committing to uh, for the existing park as far as signage and barriers to prevent off-road vehicles from accessing and damaging that space and, and what the timeline for that might be. Thank you, Worship Councillor Eastmuir. Um, so when we took the park, the intention was to mark it and sign it. So I'm surprised actually it hasn't been done yet. So I'll ensure that it does um, get back on a list or onto a list. The other park, or the other portion, which is the um, covenant area, that's still private property, so um, that we, we can't do that portion, but um, our portion was to be done when we took it. 
Okay, I'll look forward to following up with you on that because I, um, when the volunteers with NALT and Nature Nanaimo and the city of Nanaimo were out last Wednesday on a super rainy day to uh, cut some of the scotch broom in there, we actually weren't sure where the park started and I had to look on, on my Google Maps to kind of see where the darker green area began. So I think that would be a, an easy and important step for helping delineate where the edge of the park is so that we don't have ATVs um, accessing that area without knowing that it is actually city parkland. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you, Councillor Gesselbrook. Uh, thanks, Mayor, and through you. Um, yeah, I think the last time I was walking through there was uh, uh, last summer, and when you're in the Plains area, you're, I was just really struck by how thin like the soil is, and you can really see that, you know, the water that's higher really percolates down through and feeds those those flowers and that it is a very sensitive area and development in that area um, is going to irreparably uh, harm that. And um, I think, you know, Councillor Manley is speaking to the uh, ENN land grant and, and how much land is 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 privately owned and that is makes it much more difficult to protect and it's, it's sad seeing these small little slivers of areas that um, still are, are home to, you know, a very rich uh, level of biodiversity and I think that we really do need to you know make every effort to protect them um, and I think that these motions recognize that for this particular area uh, there are constraints and uh, with resources and we really do need to work with the federal and provincial government to to make it happen and you know at the provincial and federal level there's a lot of talk about um, you know preserving biodiversity and, and reaching these UN goals of protection and I think that um, if folks are, are really serious about doing that, uh, you know, we do expect to, to see a high level of collaboration in, in, in trying to protect uh, the Harewood Plains. And um, just finally, I, I think um, we're laughing as our, our, maybe not exactly laughing, but as our e email boxes were filling up with th these emails, because I, I don't think that this is a particular contentious thing on council. I think everybody here would like to see Harewood Plains uh, protected. So. It really was already a, a slam dunk, but it just really does speak to the amount of people that did take the time to write in at how important this is. And, and often when we get emails, it's, it's engaging on other things and we don't see even that level of engagement. And so natural areas are very protect, uh, important for Nanaimo whites. And um, you know, I'm happy to see these motions go forward and, and, and protect this area, thank you. Thank you very much. If there's no further comments, I'm not going to be quite as generous as my fellow councillors when it comes to trying to respond to 500 emails. Because <laughs> as the spokesperson for council, it's uh, generally expected my job is to respond. And, and so I just want to extend a shout out to Donna Stennis, the administrative assistant to council, who uh, has ably tried to manage responding to all of those emails. Uh, having said that, I, I want to go back to something uh, Mr. Hunter Jarrett said demonstrate strong leadership. Please do not give us credit for anything beyond what is being voted on tonight. And I, I don't want to put a damper on things, but I want us to be realistic. The motions are simply requests to the federal and provincial government to work together to preserve this. And, and I want to talk for a second or two about the reality of parkland and ac parkland acquisition and preservation of lands. The federal government uh, I think arguably is responsible for preserving unique ecosystems across the country that are of national importance. And Mr. Chapman tonight pointed out this is the only place in Canada uh, where this species exists. Uh, the province is expected to preserve uh, lands for the general benefit of the citizens of British Columbia, again, uh, that are significant and important, have particular recreational, cultural, historical, emotional, occasionally, value. City parks are different. City parks are there to provide recreational opportunities and green space for local citizens. Everyone is welcome to use them whether they live in Nanaimo or not and we understand that. The reality is that if the city, uh, and I'm sure there will be pressure to do so at some point, but I want to give the public fair warning where I stand on this, there will be pressure to purchase these properties. If the city does that, that means we will not have the money to purchase those properties or acquire properties within the city boundaries that would otherwise be appropriately become part of our parks in the city. 
The federal government will not send money down to purchase a city park. The provincial government will not send money down to purchase a city park. So my, my point in this is that it is incredibly important given the enthusiasm and it is absolutely correct, legitimate and important that you continue to do so, that the enthusiasm that's been demonstrated by the public be directed at the federal and provincial governments who have both the resources, the interest and the responsibility when it comes to something as unique as the Harewood Plains. So don't give us credit uh, too much tonight, as much as I'm appreciative of this, and I think we've wrestled this matter to unanimity without question. Uh, don't give us too much credit for stating the obvious. We are calling upon senior government to recognize that they have the responsibility to ensure the Harewood Plains are protected uh, because of their unique uh, ecological value, the unique species that exist there. So I am hopefully looking forward to in hearing from my colleagues, both Lisa Marie Barron, our Member of Parliament, and Sheila Malcolmson, and Doug Routley, and Adam Walker, that their mailboxes are likewise full, uh, because they need to know that this is important to uh, people in the city. Uh, and in that regard, let me give you some bit of political advice based on a fair bit of experience. Try and make your letters a little more unique. Getting a number of letters that are form letters, and I see some young people at the back of the room who are probably experienced advocates. Getting uh, standard form letters is helpful, but it's not nearly as impactful as even a two or three sentence original comment that demonstrates you really do care uh, about uh, these lands and the species that exist there. So with that, I'm going to call for the vote. All those in favor? And any opposed, none, motion carries. Thank you very much to all of you for coming out tonight and demonstrating your support for the motions. Uh, thank you to staff for their work this evening and everyone else who's attended. And we have no questions, Ms. Gurry. Motion for adjournment, Councillor Perino, seconded Councillor Armstrong. All those in favor, any opposed, none, motion.